Recently, Adobe changed everything when it came to photo editing and in the wildlife world, it's the same thing. It is much easier now. And I always say that the best way to edit your photos is to have a great starting point. And the best way to do that is to have a, the proper exposure in the camera when you take it, and that way it looks good on the screen, right on your screen when you first import your images. But as you guys know, sometimes it doesn't always work like that. Things happen fast. Sometimes things are underexposed, overexposed. So we're gonna look at a few examples today of some wildlife photos, and we're gonna get these going. And basically all Adobe did was add a new color profile. It's called Adaptive Color. And you just click up here and it's gonna reset everything to a neutral starting point. You might think, well, I just hit auto and there we go. But you'll notice everything is still the same. We have highlights, shadows, nothing is touched. Only the raw file itself was changed a bit. So you can still control the highlights and everything. Let's just command Z that and we'll hit auto. You can see similar result, but now you have to change the settings again like the highlights and shadows let's um go back and let's do the adaptive color and now we could edit this photo like normal so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna crop in a little bit and uh let's say right about there something like that this ermine was so so stinking cute um playing in this moss here so got a few examples you can see what some of my edited versions look like and uh let's just do a quick edit i'm gonna put the composition like that I'd say and I think that looks good now uh, editing is going to be a lot easier we can just reduce the highlights a little bit bring out the um, details in the whites of the ermine and I'm going to just decrease the shadows a little bit add some contrast we can add some contrast this way not too much and then the rest of my edits are uh, with masking so this is basically a uh, little editing tutorial. I'm not gonna take too long to do this, but we'll just uh, decrease and make a little personal vignette basically. And that looks good there. And same thing here. Let's just add a little contrast there. And then what I'm gonna do is make a little radio gradient up here and just kinda add a little bit of lighting into this photo. maybe a little clarity and uh, I mean, like I said, I'm not gonna do too much into the editing. Maybe we'll give it a little bit of a style and let's see, see what looks good here. That looks good. That looks good. And Okay, that looks good. Here's the four, here's the after. Um, not a whole lot, like I said. We'll just in, you know increase some sharpening a little bit here. Really just make it on the ermine. Okay, so. And I'll just change the color profile. This is what I've been liking to do a lot lately. Basically like that. This is a little more a stylized edit with some blue in the shadows. We can always um, just increase the overall contrast without touching the ermine. We can just do this. And what I'm gonna do is invert this, line it up just around the face, and let's just increase the contrast a little bit. Shadows, and maybe, okay, that looks good. I'm liking that. And uh, yeah, it's really easy to edit wildlife now with the uh, new adaptive profile. That was a pretty good exposed image. Let's find another one. Now we have a crazy, crazy exposure, 25,000 ISO with the R1. And uh, this is like 30 minutes to an hour after sunset. And uh, the ermine has changed now. This is like a week difference. And uh, ermine has changed. Let's see the difference if we hit auto. Nope, that looks absolutely terrible actually. Let's go to adaptive color. And that looks good. It has Nothing major has changed. But now we can edit this photo. 
and I like the cool look because this was shot pretty dark here. So let's just add a little contrast. I think actually that looks pretty good. And increase the shadow. Okay. And let's just do a little crop here. Oh, it's the Canon R1 with only 24 megapixels. You can't crop much. I mean, 25,000 ISO, look at that noise. You really don't have to denoise it. We'll do that at the end. Let's add a custom vignette to make the ermine kind of stand out here. And actually with this one, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna intersect the mask with the select background so it's not going over the ermine. There we go. And same thing here. Intersect with select background. There we go. Change this up just a little bit. Okay, I'm liking how this is looking so far. And uh, Everything looks good. Let's uh, select the subject here. Well, let's add a little bit of brightness to the face, not too much. And what we'll do is just intersect with a radio gradient. And uh, yeah, we look at that. Okay. So you can see it doesn't do a whole bunch, but it does bring out just some details in the face. All right, that's looking good. I'm liking everything so far. And what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of overall coolness to this photo. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. I barely touch these sliders, but it adds just a little bit Okay, I'm gonna decrease the blacks in the blues there. That's looking pretty, pretty good. I like how this looks so far. The only thing we're missing is some saturation in the ermine. So let's just do another select subject and let's just increase the saturation a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Now the brown and the blues look pretty good together. I'm liking this image, and if we wanted to, we can increase the sharpening again. And just increase the ermine basically only. Okay, that's a little too much. Let's bring it down. I don't want it to be too much. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, there's a little pop. And we can just change the blues just a little bit more. And there we go, that's a final edit. And if we wanted to really make it look cleaner, we can denoise it. I set between 40 and 50, I'm really happy with all the time with Adobe's Lightroom denoise. It works so good. And the fact that the Canon R1 just shoots 25,000 ISO, 40,000 ISO, like butter and they come out this clean i'm really happy with it and it inspires me to stay out longer after sunset before sunrise and uh there we go that's our buddy there's the before and there's the after and the adaptive color profile just gives us that basic starting point it was just a quick video it wasn't a big editing tutorial but try it out try the adaptive color let me know what you guys think of adobe's new adaptive color i don't know if it's using ai i don't know what it's using i don't know how it's manipulating the raw file but it definitely looks good and i'm really happy with the results i mentioned a little bit about the canon r1 if you want to see my initial review of that check this video right up here when i tried it and then i eventually bought it Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.